Hi, this is Jean Shamley, and welcome back to Passing the Torch. I hope that you've had a great week. I hope that you have been finding your divine appointments and seeking God and asking Him on your way of doing things. We talked last week about um, divine appointments from God and creative evangelism and you find in your own way to do things and what works for you, but find it. Um, God is so good and the life in Christ is so exciting when you share it. And if you think that you can't do it, just go back to the number 18 uh, divine appointments and listen in on that if you missed it. And you'll hear my testimony because I used to be so shy and I'll show you how the Lord walked me through to break through that to where I, I'm a soul winner. And I have been for about 35, 36 years now. And it's a joy. Oh, you'll experience joy like you never have before. Well, we're talking about living in the book of Acts. That's our subject. And we're going to continue on. We're going to talk about some things today. And it's just, this is going to take a while. I'm going to call it a mini-series because there's no way to get in it. The book of Acts is probably the action-adventure book of the whole New Testament, okay? So it is packed, packed with incredible things that the Holy Spirit does and the apostles and the prophets. And, you know, Christians walked in things. And there's just so much good teaching in there. And it's not a 2,000-year-old book. It's a now book. It's a me book. It's a you book. God has things for you. So let's pray. Father, my heart is so full. Lord, there's so much to share. And I ask that you take over me and take over this time that we have together, this little segment of teaching that we're going to do. Have your way in me. Have your way, Lord. And I pray that you open the eyes of our understanding. And, Lord, that you impart to all the hearers, Lord, a joy, a desire, and a hunger to seek after these things of God, these things that you have given to us in your word, these truths that are available for all of us to walk in. You said, Lord, you're no respecter of persons. You will not leave anyone out. Father, if they seek you according to your word, and surrender to your ways, your answer is yes and amen. Your answer is yes and amen to them. So lead us and guide us into all truth, Holy Spirit, today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, I'm so excited. i, I got to tell you what happened this weekend. So I, I go to another town, and I was actually going, it was on a Friday, going to a, uh, an appointment down there. And I got such good news on that appointment. I was so excited and full of joy. And I'm like, oh, I just got to celebrate. So I went out to eat just by myself. I kind of had a date with Jesus. I, I, I had a couple of cousins in town. They were busy. So I thought, I'm just going with the Lord. So I went and I sat and I thought, well, you know, when I'm done, I'm just going to go uh, go over to Ross and uh, look at clothes. I love to find a sale. <laughs> I love looking for sales. So I go over to Ross and I'm, I'm uh, just trying on clothes. It was just more for fun than for buying. Um, I think I picked out a couple of things that were inexpensive, but I just enjoyed trying them on. I was just having a fun, relaxing day out of town. It was just very nice. But the fellow that was the attendant at the fitting room, my heart, every time I went past him and he gave me the little number, you know, they give you the number of how many garments you have and you go in and come out. And uh, my heart just kept tugging on the inside of me about this young man. And I'm like, wow. I just feel your heart tugging, Lord. I, there's just something about him, and I don't, I'm not sure what that is. So I tried on clothes, and he had such a great attitude, and he did his work with joy, and I was just really impressed by him as a person. But uh, I walked out the door to my car, and as I was walking, I heard very clearly in that still, small voice down on the inside of me that we talked about. You need to learn that, okay? We can train ourselves in these things. We seek the Lord. He will train you. He will train you. No respecter of persons. So I'm walking to the car, and very clear, I hear the Lord say, I want you to get your CD. Now I have some music CDs, songs that I've written myself. And give him the CD, Destiny, and tell him to listen to the words of the, the title song, Destiny, and that those words are from me to him. And I thought, wow, that is so specific. Now, you have to break through your flesh. Everything in the flesh says, oh, don't do it. You're not hearing God. 
blah, 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 blah. Spiritual warfare, ignore it, break through it. So picked up the CDs and I went back in and I just looked him in the eye. Now you just never know, but I just was trusting the Lord. I knew I heard from him. I said, hi, how you doing? I said, you know, I said, I want to give you, uh, you know, the, the nice employee of the ward today. I'd like to give you my CD. Would you like to have it? I said, I'll write my music. Here's a CD. And um, he goes, well, yeah, I'd love to. And I said, you know, the Lord really put on my heart to tell you that this CD, Destiny, is for you. And especially listen to the song titled Destiny. And the words in the song, God is saying those to you. He has a message for you in these songs. And he just sat back. He said, wow. He said, you have no idea how much that means to me. He said, I've been thinking and thinking about it. He said, because I have this desire in my heart, you know, to create and to do music and to, you know, to, to film. And I had this dream and, you know, it's just been so heavy on my heart not to give up on that. And then here you come telling me I have a destiny and that God's saying I have a destiny. Ah, oh, such a beautiful encounter to bring the word of the Lord to somebody. And I love it on the streets. I love encountering a stranger by the divine purposes, by the divine appointment of the will of God. Because see, it blesses me as much as it blesses them and blesses God. You have no idea how much God loves to witness us doing that. He enjoys when we obey Him. And especially when we step out in faith to obey the still small voice. And it also can be a word of knowledge. A word of God's knowledge was telling me this young man is your divine appointment. Okay? There was probably 75 people in that store that day. Only this young man did I know by the Spirit of God, by the word of knowledge, that he was the one I was to talk to. Nobody else in the store caught my attention. The Holy Spirit drew me to him. And it was beautiful. And I also gave him a salvation track in case he wasn't there. Like I said, I like my tools. I like to have things in my purse. Uh, you may find your own thing. It may be a devotional book. It might be something that you've typed up yourself. It might be you have a blog. Write down the name of it and give it to him on an index card. I, I don't care what it is. You seek God and find your way. Tools are great. You know, you can do nice things for people. You can give away water bottles. But if you don't give them the gospel and tell them how to be born again, it ain't happening. Okay? You may water some seeds and that's fine. But we want to be fishermen. Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. Let's go for the gold. Okay? Let's not fall short. We need to give people the truth of the gospel so they can receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Now, I knew God had a message, but man, I stuck that track in there because I knew if he read that, if he's not born again, and I, I suspected that he was, but like I said, this was in a public store and he was at work. I could not hold him for long. The Lord graced me for that little conversation and some people came up behind me and I had to leave, but I had things to leave with him so that I could walk away and know. The Holy Spirit's going to be ministering to this young man for the next 24 hours and beyond. He was blown away. He said, you have no idea. He said it several times. You have no idea how much that means to me. And see, I get to walk away and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Father stay with them. <sighs> Forgive me. I'm so overwhelmed at the goodness of God. <laughs> to be a part of that. To witness the Spirit of God moving in somebody's life and to be allowed by God to be a vessel of His use. There is nothing greater in this world. <laughs> There's no treasure like that treasure. And I want you to experience it. I want you to be a part of the work of God. There is a coming flow. There is a coming harvest that is so dynamic. It's the last one, people. 
We are in the last days. There is a last harvest, and I am prophesying to you now. Jesus Christ has chosen you. If you're sitting here listening to this, Jesus Christ has chosen you to be a servant and a vessel ready and fit for his use. He wants you to learn what his word says. He wants you to learn how to hear his voice. He wants you to learn how to recognize and cooperate with the gifts of the Spirit so that you can be the one reaching others. You can be the vessel he uses in his harvest. You can be the one in an army of people God's raising up. There's going to be thousands of us all over the world. Now there's leaders and there's trainers, but I don't think there's going to be stars like there has been. This is my personal opinion. In my generation, there were these stars, you know, uh, people that were called prophets and leaders and teachers and people followed them. I really believe your generation is going to be different because, you know, I'm not teaching you to follow me, okay? I'm sharing my stories as an example to put flesh on what is in this book, okay? It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about this book. Living it. Loving it. Walking in it. Spreading it in the earth. You know, we pray the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, guess what? He wants it done through us. He wants us to be a part of that journey. He wants us to be a part of his life in the earth. Oh, beloved, God has so much for you. You're not here by accident. You're not hearing this by accident. I really encourage you to go back particularly, you know, session 8, 9, 10, 11, you know, the sessions on how do I know when God's talking to me. If you haven't heard those, please, and to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, okay? These things are so important to get you ready. So maybe the next step in getting you ready, because I do feel led of the Spirit, is to be talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So what I want to do for you because this is the beauty of having a woman that has been walking the walk for 36 years and I'm sharing with you, I'm passing the torch to you, but I want to share it with you in a way that your generation does not derail like mine did. Yep, my generation, there was an outpouring of the word of faith. Okay, there was a great outpouring. And I tell you, it derailed. And the main reason is motives got selfish. And it didn't stay in the spirit. It got in the flesh. To where people were seeking things and using faith for things and selfish purposes. But everything is for others, okay? It's really not about us. Jesus Christ said, the greatest among you will be your servant, this is about dying to self and becoming a bond servant of Jesus Christ where you hear and obey everything he says. You train yourself like a good soldier to hear and obey everything he says. Then he will move you and I tell you what, life will be more than exciting because Jesus is dynamic. He's powerful. He's all-knowing all-knowing and that's what's so cool about this particular gift of the Spirit that I'm going to talk a little bit about today I'm just going to get into one it's called a word of knowledge it is a supernatural manifestation of a portion of something that God knows a word of knowledge a fragment of God's knowledge just a little something that just by the working of the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden you know something that there's no way you could know. It is just given to you. A small fragment of God's knowledge is just revealed to you by the gift of the Holy Spirit. So let me read first about these gifts. I'll just name them for you because we're just going to talk about one today. Uh, you know, and I could probably go five sessions on one, but we're not going to do that. But I am going to go into it a little bit. 
because you need to familiarize yourself with these so that you can know what they are and flow with it. And uh, I'm going to read them to you, and then we are going to go back, and I'm going to show you how the Apostle Paul sets these gifts, spiritual gifts, in the context of priority so that your generation will not derail like mine did. Doesn't have to. Doesn't have to at all. It's all about having right heart, right motives, right priority, staying in humility, staying submitted to God, and really knowing, honey, this ain't about you. <laughs> you get to take part and you're going to get fabulously blessed, but it's not about you. It's about winning the lost and dying world that needs Jesus Christ desperately. That's why he left us here. I tell you what, churches and, and Christians that are not reaching the lost and have a heart for giving out, they become like the Dead Sea. There's no life. There's no life coming in because there's no life going out. you got to be giving out of the Spirit. And you'll learn how. Just stick with me. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I can read this without. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. So Paul's saying, I, I want you to understand these things. And he's saying that to us now. I want you to understand these things, okay? I do not want you ignorant. And he says, you know that the Gentiles were carried away unto dumb idols. However, you were led, therefore... I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, I really want to differentiate these. What you see in psychics and what you see in the occult and what you see in people that say, you know, they can just know things. Woo. And they don't name Jesus Christ as Lord, and they're not giving Him glory. That is not of the Spirit of God. That is a demonic, satanic spirit. And I don't care who you've met, if they say they're a Christian and they're delving into the psychic stuff and horoscopes and knowing these things and crystal balls and you know Ouija boards and all that, they are so far off track. Run away! <laughs> Run away! All right, all this mess. And look, I was a missionary to a New Age community. I know they're mess. All right. I know it looks spectacular. I know they can come up with stuff. It's nothing more than demons in the, in the spirit realm that know what's going on. They're talking to other familiar spirits. It, it's, it's a trick. And sometimes it is supernatural, but it's not of God. Run away. Okay. There ain't no such thing as a channel or a 2,000-year-old guru. Run away. Get away from that mess. You come to the holy word of God and you get it God's way. Satan can only counterfeit what God has. All right, nothing Satan has is original. Nothing Satan has is new. All right, he just copies God. And it's counterfeit, it's fake, and it's dangerous. Learn the truth. All right? The way to know a counterfeit is to know, like the way they train bankers to recognize counterfeits is to have them study the real thing. They will study a true $100 bill so that when a fake one, a counterfeit comes across so pat, they can see, ooh, you know, there's something different about this. Study the real thing. You don't need to know about their mess. All right? Satan's a counterfeit. He's just a copycat. Get the real thing from the Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. All right. So let me go on here. It says no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So stay away from those that are operating in supernatural gifts, not by the Holy Spirit. Stay away. All right. My rant is done. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So there's many gifts he's talking about here. There's actually, uh, what I'm going to list here is uh, nine gifts of the Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. All of these gifts of the Spirit are under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the Father God. All right, those 
operate at his will not at our will we just need to understand them and know about them so we can cooperate with them we can't make them happen the gifts of the spirit operate at the will of God though as the Holy Spirit wills it we don't make it happen but the cool thing sometimes they do because you need it when you're out there working for God and you're living your life for God those he may just turn them on so that you will have a word of God's knowledge you'll know something you'd have no way to know but it's gonna benefit you it's gonna bless you it's gonna equip you to be a blessing to someone else how did I know that one young man out of a whole store of maybe 75 or 100 people that was the one man that I was to talk to he was my divine appointment well that was a word of knowledge from God that's how I didn't I couldn't know how could I know that I couldn't know that he was ripe and ready to receive from God I couldn't know that that was God's knowledge it's awesome so let's read on Four: the diversities of gifts but the same spirit the differences of ministries but the same Lord and there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge. That's what I'm going to talk about today. Through the same Spirit. All through the Holy Spirit. Capital S, if you look in your Bible. 1 Corinthians 12, 9. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of heal healings by the same Spirit. He's really emphasizing that. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills as he wills these things are under the, the divine operation of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone you can't make them happen but when you put yourself in the right heart and when you are out there sharing the kingdom of God being aware and alert and listening for your divine appointments don't be surprised if the gift of the Spirit these different diverse gifts begin to operate through you. And as we go through this series, you're going to learn more and more about it. I'm just going to take one today. They're so beautiful. I want you to turn with me to John chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. I'm going to show you Jesus demonstrated this. And you say, oh, well, that's Jesus. Well, that's okay. We're going to go to another one, too, where it's Paul. So you can't use that excuse. All right? So, John 4, 16, I did not have that up, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, I'm going to, John 4, turn with me, I love this. So, you know, you're familiar with, probably, I hope, uh, the woman at the well, where Jesus goes and he sees the woman at the well in Samaria. And the woman says to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. And Jesus says to her, he's talking with the woman at the well. Okay, so he's having this conversation. And listen to this. I want to focus in on this. You're probably familiar with this story. Um, he says to her, Go call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband. For you have five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband, in that you spoke truly. Now, that is a demonstration of how that gift works. Jesus was sitting there, and he knew. He had a word of God's knowledge in him that he knew she had five husbands that's pretty specific okay this is a gift that can be very very specific it's pretty amazing a gift a word of God's knowledge and you say well that's Jesus he knew everything anyway and you can argue that but I believe he was demonstrating things for us and it's recorded but let's go to Acts chapter 9 verse 11 
I'm going to show you a real specific one. And this is just some guy named Ananias. Now, he was a servant of God. I believe he was a prophet of God. Uh, Acts chapter 9, 11. Turn in your Bibles. This is so good. I really wasn't sure how all this was going to pan out. All right, this is a good one. This is awesome. All right, let's go back up. This is when the Apostle Paul has been struck with light. He receives Christ, and he's uh, blinded. Do you remember back there? And you can go back and read that in the book of Acts chapter 9. But we're going to pick up where God speaks to Ananias. Okay, so he trembling said astonished. Um, let me back up here. Let's go to 4. Acts 9, 4. Then he, uh, Saul, who was to become Paul, fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I'm Jesus who you're persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goats. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing the voice. Then Saul arose from the ground and went with his eyes were opened. He saw no one. So Paul, Paul was blinded. He was blinded. And he went three days without sight, verse 9, and he ate, neither ate or drank. Now this is what I want to call your attention to. Now there was a th certain disciple. This is just a guy that's a disciple. It doesn't say he was an apostle or anything. A certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here am I, Lord. So the Lord came to him and said, Arise and go to the street called Straight. <laughs> he gives him the name of the guy's street. Straight was the name of the street. And inquire at the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. That is so detailed. This is a word of God's knowledge. Coming to Ananias, who's just a disciple, giving him the name of the street he's supposed to go to, the name of the guy he's supposed to pray for and, and telling him what's going to happen. And not only that, on the other end, Saul, who has been blinded for three days, is being told by a word of God's knowledge. There's no way he could have known this on his own. It was above his own knowledge. It was a supernatural manifestation of a word of God's knowledge to where Saul knew a guy named Ananias was going to come pray for him. These are very specific words of knowledge taking place here. And what happens? Then Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard from many about this man, how much harm he's done to your saints in Jerusalem. Saul, before he was saved, was out killing Christians and persecuting them. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, and Ananias was a little scared to go do this. <laughs> Listen to what God says. Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. Laying hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he believed his sight, he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. That's a lot of beautiful specifics. And this is in the life here of Saul. I mean, Ananias is just a disciple that calls him. That's you and I. We're disciples of Christ, aren't we? So we can expect and understand and know that the word of knowledge is just a sudden gift of the Spirit where you know something that there's no way you could possibly know it.
and you recognize that as, ah, oh, that's a word of knowledge. That is the Holy Spirit willing that I know something that God knows that I can't know in my own being. I can't know that naturally. There's no way I would know that in a natural way. Okay? And I'll give you one more little example. We're, we're coming up to our close of our time. But there was, I was working in a furniture store, and there was a guy I was working with. You work with people, okay? I just want to show you this in a very common setting, because this is how this gift operates. Now, I'm at work, and there's a guy, furniture store, I worked up front. There was a guy that worked in the warehouse, and he came up front. He was walking by. And I walked by him, and when I walked by him, down on the inside of me, I could see the word and hear the word, I don't know how to explain that, in the spirit, the word suicide. I thought, wow. Now, a little later in the day, he walked back by, and again, on the inside of me, I just had a knowing. This guy is thinking about committing suicide. I just heard it. I just knew it. There's no way I could, I didn't even know this guy. I didn't even know his name. Okay, I had no idea, but every time I walked past him, I knew he was thinking about suicide. I could hear that on the inside of me, suicide. So I called a friend, had him pray with me and come into agreement on that God would show me what to do with his knowledge. I, I understood this, what to do. And the Lord really breathed on me and gave me supernatural boldness to go talk to him. And I went up to him and I told him, I said, you know, God loves you so much. I said, I just really felt like God wanted me to come back here and tell you. And, and I really believe he's told me that you were thinking about committing suicide and he doesn't want you to do it. Well, this guy's mouth dropped open. <laughs> How could I know that? I couldn't. And he knew that. He knew there was no way I could know that. So this caused him to glorify God. This caused him to give God glory. He didn't glorify me. He knew this was divine. All eyes were on the Holy One. Because he recognized there's no way this woman who doesn't even know me can walk up and know that I'm planning on how to kill myself. So I was able to talk to him. I gave him some materials and I told him it's, it was fairly sad. His parents were Mormons and they were putting all this pressure on him to go do this two-year missionary thing. And he just didn't have it in him to do it. And he thought that, well, there's no way he can be saved, okay? That they, he had been taught, not that all I'm believe like this, but he had been taught salvation by works. And when I was able to present him with the gospel and tell him salvation is a gift of Jesus Christ, not by works, lest any man should boast, he was so relieved. He was totally set free. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth of God set this young man free. Not only that, how can you imagine he felt that the God of the universe intervened in such a supernatural, divine way that could not have been known any other way than that God knew him and cared about him and was watching him. And so I gave him materials on how to be born again, the gift of God, Oh, the gift of God is great, and God wants us to share. Well, I have so much more to tell you. We're up on our mark. I'm going to have to end now. I will continue this tomorrow. There's a lot more. I, If you have not listened to the first one in this series, uh, go back and look at Divine Appointments, because God wants us living in the book of Acts. God has divine appointments for you. And see, when you hear me talk about these things, when I show them to you in the scriptures, and you hear the very common stories today at work, you will become aware of your own life and understand and know that the Holy Spirit is no respecter of persons. He may will to operate that in your life. But if you're aware of it, you understand it, then when it happens, you'll recognize it and cooperate with it. And you'll see the fruit of what it was even given for. So let's pray. Father, Lord, only you, Holy Spirit, can really teach these things. But Lord, we are equipping ourselves. We are learning your word. We're listening to your word. And we're equipping ourselves because we want to be used by you in this last harvest. Father, get us ready. Holy Spirit, teach us. Lord Jesus, we love you. 
and it's in your holy name. We want to glorify you, Jesus. We want to lift you up in the earth. We want to see the great harvest, and we each want to be a part of it. May it be so, Lord. Seal these words in our heart. Lead us and guide us into all truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, and we'll be back with more. This is an ongoing progressive teaching, so get in your word. Look at that. Again, that was 1 Corinthians chapter 12 about the spiritual gifts. And I will go over a little bit uh, the next teaching. Uh, I talked about how it derailed, and we will get at how to have our priorities straight and everything. We'll talk about that. But be excited. You're chosen to live now. You're chosen to live in the last days. You're chosen to be an end-time saint. You're chosen. You wouldn't be sitting here listening to me right now if you weren't. Be encouraged. Break through. Don't let the devil rob you of what you were born for. Amen. I'll see you next time. God bless.